Yeah, that's right. We're going to start right here in the garage and work around the house. And what we're going to talk about today is filter day. Now, this is supposed to be a quick tip. It's really going to take a little, little bit of time, but I guarantee you're probably going to see some filters and things you may want to do around the house that you don't even know about. Now, a lot of people have just moved into the villages and they're approaching that six month or about a year or so. And what I've done is I created something that I call filter day. And when I do that, I pull out a piece of paper and I'll show it to you at the very end. In fact, I'll hold it up close enough for you and make a picture of it if you want. But that's the day I go around and do a bunch of things that deal with filters <laughs> and mostly filters and some of these things you've probably never seen before so let's go ahead and get started right here in the garage as i've said let me put a clarifier on this as i've said many times i am not a professional in any of these areas so don't listen to me do go do your investigation yourself but these are some of the things that i've learned so far and really what i'm going to do is start right here in where the air handler is and we're going to talk about the filters in there and flushing your system out and this is something that's depending on what it is suggested to do every six months to a year first thing we're going to be concerned with is the filter now if you look i'm going to whoops there we go um, unhook these you really want to make sure that both of these latches are latched and you want to look behind down in here, all the way up along here, and you wanna make sure that this is completely sealed. Also, up right up in this area here, where this goes through, when they originally did, in fact, you can see it kind of pulling away from there, we had to go back in and real, re, reseal that. Now, I'll tell you the reason why. If you open up your doors and you see a lot of water around here during the summer, the problem was, is there was no seal here when they put this together and they had to put a new seal along here. And as soon as they did that, put that seal around there, I stopped getting water all back in here and back behind there and on this side. And basically what it was, was condensation. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put some warm water into the condensation line. And that is done right here there's a place for um, owners to go ahead and fill this. And what I do is I take some, uh, a funnel like this, and you put uh, about a gallon or so of warm water down there. Um, some say hot, some say warm, but what I was told by the Munns guy is not to use Clorox and not to use, people use vinegar, because he said what happens is if it gets really cold or that cold water hits the vinegar, it tends to turn into like jello type stuff and that can end up clogging your condensation line. And we're gonna go outside in a second and look at the outside of the air conditioner unit out there and I'll show you some things you may wanna check there. But what we also wanna check too and change you can see every time I put a new filter up here, I put a date up there. And that was the last time that I changed this was September 1. And actually I do it every six months or check it every six months at least. And the I talked to the Munns guy and he was here today and he said six months to a year. And I'll tell you something that eh, you may want to think about when you do this. Now, to get to it, you just pull this out like this, make sure the unit's off, and then slide the filter out. Now you can see in this unit, this is a pretty big filter. And if you look on here, there's what's called a MERV rating. And to keep this really simple, this is how small or how large a particle the filter itself will take out. If you look at, for this is a carrier unit right here, if you look at the instructions, it says either a MERV 8 or a MERV 11. Now, I think for the normal person, the 8 or 11 is kind of what they suggest. But this time, what I did was I got these filters on Amazon. I'll put the link in Amazon. And it's a company called Filter Buy, and they make some something like 18 zillion different types of filters. And you wanna make sure that you have 
the correct size. So this is 1920 by four and a quarter, and this is 19 and an eighth, 19, 1920 by four, four, and then there's actually an actual size. So these, the, these filters are within a 16th of an inch of this. Also wanna take a look at the filter. You can look at one side and look at the other, and make sure there's not any really big contaminants in there to make sure that you don't have any problems. Now I'm just gonna put this filter back in and you'll see how easy this is. This is the filter I just showed you that's in the box. And if you notice, there's a couple of things. On this side, I put the date on there. And then I also put the new date up on, on a little piece of blue tape to remind me. Because the date that I put on this filter is pretty much the date that kind of kicks off my, quote, filter day. You also need to take a look at these arrows right here, and you need to make sure that they point in the way the airflow goes. Now for this handler, the air comes here and goes up and is pulled up through the house. So you wanna take this, and sometimes they're a little tight, and go ahead, and there's a little lip inside there, go ahead and push that in, and make sure it's snug and it should fit really good. And then there's two little tiny hooks right on the bottom right here. And you make sure they go in the slots right there. Now, when you put this in, go ahead and make sure that you kind of look around, or I look around to make sure there's no bunch of water in there or anything leaking. And put those two little clips down in the slot. And then close this. And make sure it's sealed. Oh. That didn't go, that didn't go well. <laughs> make sure it's sealed on there and then make sure you put your cap when you're done back on your uh, drain there when you get done flushing that out. And so that's it for in here. Now we can go ahead and go outside and uh, take a look at the outside part of the unit. I'm out on the side of my house and this is, uh, I have one of the uh, on-demand hot water heaters. And right down here you will see this pipe that goes right here, and you'll see right now, you can probably see water dripping out of it. What you wanna check for, that's normal just to have a little bit dripping out of there. But what you wanna check for when you put the warm water into the um, tube back there, the white tube we looked at with the, the uh, cap on there, you wanna see water come out of this. And the reason is what you're doing is you're checking to make sure that's clear and you're kind of flushing that out. And I think they say in the, in the manual from the villages or Munns or whatever, to do that once every six months. And I think it's his quote, it's even better if you do it every six months. Now, next thing I do is walk out here. And since I have a fairly new home, I closed on my house in August. There's not a whole lot to check out here. Basically what I do is kind of just open this up, make sure there's nothing in there in the shutoff, and then come out and check this part of the pan, make sure there's nothing living in there, make sure there's nothing that's crawled up here. The other day I had a, a frog that got stuck down there. And then also, I hope you can see it, right down there there's a, like little black holes. You wanna make sure that that pan right down there is open and the water's actually draining out because there's a lot of condensation that takes place when this is cranking with the air conditioner. And speaking of the air conditioner, so we talked about the MERV 8 and the MERV um, 11. During the summer, and I'm gonna try this, somebody told me that if you use a little bit less of a number, the air conditioner may run a little more efficient. Like in other words, using eight instead of an 11. So I'm gonna try the eight and see what happens. Anyway, that's it out here, except for I have something you may not think about with filters. Let's jump over to the other side of the garage. Here I am next to my good old trusty vacuum cleaner. Now, you might know that the vacuum cleaner, uh, depending on which one you have, this is a, a HEPA one, has a bunch of different filters. So the, the one filter um, for this, this is a Shark, I check and pull out is this one right here, and I'll actually take this, check it, make sure it's not too dirty, and then I'll take some air, blow it out, and put it back in. I should probably do some more vacuuming, so it's a little bit cleaner. 
<laughs> but right now I haven't lived here that much, so it doesn't get used all that much. And then up in the top part of the vacuum cleaner is this filter right here. Now this, this, and, and everybody's is different, but I take this out and you'd see it's not very dirty at all, but a little, just a little bit on top. And that you can go ahead and wash that foam out with some, just some plain old warm water. And there's also these pads right at the bottom. Uh, obviously not real dirty yet because I haven't lived here that long to do a whole lot of vacuuming. But I check those and if they need to be um, changed out or new filters put in. You know, the reason you're doing a lot of this is so that all this equipment runs, oops, sorry about the glasses. I was wondering why everything was so dark. Everything runs more efficiently. Now, after I'm done with it, oh, I'm sorry, I do one more thing too. And that is also, is if you look down here, there's this piece right here and you can take this off and look in and check in here uh, for this one and actually right here, look at that. It's a stick stuck in there. So that kind of tends to clog things up. So you may want to, if there's an access, to go ahead and check the um, rollers, go ahead and do that. And I guess that goes along with, I don't have a, a robo vacuum cleaner, but I guess also that would do that. If you use a shop vac a lot, there's a filter down in here that is something I also check. Now we're gonna jump inside and I'm gonna show you a bunch of filters inside. If you do a list on this and you go do it every six months or every year and you just go through the list, it doesn't take you much more than a half an hour to go do this, but it really helps everything run efficiently. Let's go jump inside. Now we are inside with the washer and dryer. Now I know everybody knows this right here, your lint. Also, you need to, they suggest once a year, you have a professional go clean your line out and make sure that, and I, I think that's kind of important in the beginning to have somebody come do that after the first year, I would guess, because you have new carpet in there, you've started washing a lot of new towels and that type of thing, bedding, and that produces a lot of lint, so you may wanna, and you may wanna not put that off for a year and give it a shot and see what happens. Down low, down here, right by where the filter is, and you just want to get this screwdriver. Now, I have a towel put down here. I've never done it with this machine, so I have no idea what to expect. Just flip that off. You want to put a, oops, you want to put a pan under it, like that, and it has a little spout. And right in here, you should be able to twist this and you can actually control the water slightly by how quickly you unscrew this. And there starts to come some of the water. Uh, hopefully there's not too much. I can't remember whether they said there could be a quart or a pint, but if I have to, at least I can stop this. By not taking it all the way out, I can stop this, you know, start it up again if I have to empty the tray out. Well, there it is. As you can see, there's not too much in there. And it's not really a fine filter, but there is some chunks of stuff that came out. All there is to that. Now, there was quite a few turns in that to get it all the way in there. And clean that up. And that's about it for the washer. As you know, there's a, a lint a thing in the dryer, but you kind of change that every single time. So, on to the next project. In the kitchen, here we go. Now there might be some filters you guys know about and there may be some you don't. I'm betting there's a couple that you don't. But I'm gonna put the cam, push the camera right in here and I'm gonna show you because there's grease filters underneath here that you need to change. Um, and not necessarily change those, but they can be washed. And then there's also another filter up here that a lot of people I have no idea that it's up there, so I'm gonna show you that. Before I do, just a reminder, if you got a Keurig, they tell you that you should do that every couple of months. I think there is a clean filter light or something like that on it. Also, I've heard people say that if you have a filter on your house, you really don't need it on the Keurig. That remains to be seen. I'll try to find out that information for you in a little bit. If so, I'll put it at the end of the video. Here we go, we're gonna show you where these filters are. 
Right now we're looking underneath of the microwave and there are these small silver grates that you see right here. And you just push those back a little bit and they almost fall out. And this is kind of what they look like. They're really clear. How can you tell that they're dirty? You can feel the grease on there. Obviously I eat out more than I cook in, that's for sure, because there's absolutely no grease on there. And you'll also start to see a little bit of discolor in it, but just put them back up there and they are gonna feel actually like they're loose and you just kind of pull it back and they're, they're actually, pretty loose up there. There's another one right here. Sometimes people will have one that go all, a single one that goes all the way across here. But let me show you upstairs where there's a different filter and we'll have to do a little screwdriver work to get to that one. Right now I'm looking down on top of the microwave and there's actually right up here and you can actually see it right through there. There's a charcoal filter that needs to be actually replaced. I don't know, this is not a, is not one that you can actually wash out, but I'll show you how to take this off and what it looks like. Just so you can see exactly where I am right now, I flip the camera over to the other side and I'm gonna take off these three screws right here. these up here. Now, this thing's a little tricky unless you know what you're doing. Instead of just popping it right off like you think, you actually have to push it this way a little bit and then kind of jiggle it off. And that's how it comes off of there. And then right here is the filter on this one. Now, some of them are different and actually some of them actually have a door. And that's what it looks like right there. It's a charcoal type filter. And you go ahead and just uh, replace that. And it tells you, has a little sign right there that that is the upside and that's the side you wanna put up. Sometimes they're a little tricky to go in there and sometimes they just flop in there and they feel a little loose, but you gotta make sure you kinda get it in the slot. And like I said, sometimes it's a little tricky. <laughs> And there we go. All right, you're now inside the refrigerator. When I open this up, you look for the little guy that's running around turning that light on. Did you see him? Did you see the little guy? <laughs> Did you see the guy that turned the refrigerator light on? So now you're inside my refrigerator. And if I turn this around, the next filter is right here. And this, I've also been told a lot of people don't bother to do that if they have one of the whole house filters. But I'll tell you one thing, if you have one of these GEs, you probably did not get a plug. If you're not going to use this filter and change it out, you actually have to put a plug up there and you can call GE parts and tell them you have to have the model number and they will actually send you the plug for free. But this filter that goes in here, that's it right there, and it goes back in there. They're kind of expensive little boogers, but this little light right here on this, on this GE right here, the filter status, will start glowing orange, I believe, first, and then it turns to red when you gotta change it out. So that's that filter. I bet you thought we were all over with. Nope. There's still another one right here in the dishwasher, and a lot of people never think of this one. But actually, if you think about it, there's a lot of stuff that actually your dishwasher kind of chunks up, old food and stuff like that. So you actually have two filters right here. It's kind of a larger strain filter. And then if you turn this right, oh, look at that. Before I even got started, check that out. The screw came out of somewhere, so that might be worth checking out. There is a filter right here. It's kind of a fine mesh filter. As you can see, there's already some stuff in that that needs to be cleaned out. So I'll take that, rinse that out. You can see this, this part comes out like this on this right here, and it gives you a chance you can go ahead. There's a bunch of junk in there. I think you'll see after I get done cleaning this out. Yeah, definitely, you can see how, how clear that is right there. 
And just as simple as that, put that back in and lock that down. And that kind of locks them both down. But that was really interesting, that little screw right there. And I can't quite see where it came from. So I'm gonna have to hunt that down because it's a brand new dishwasher and screws shouldn't be coming out of it. That's about it. It is another beautiful day here down in Florida. Unfortunately, I have to go back up north in a little bit, but I can't think, oh wait, I did. I just thought of something else I usually do. During this time, I actually go out and I check the oil and transmission fluid level on my car, kind of part of the whole process. Anyway, I will flash up the list right here in about two seconds. And thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much. I, I, I hope this helped. If somebody else has got other ideas, go ahead and put it down in the list because I know there's other filters around the house. I just don't have any yet or I haven't gathered any thing that has stuff like that. And I will either see you in the villages or I will see you here back on YouTube. Thanks a lot and have a great day.